Hello and welcome back to the channel. I want to wish everyone who celebrates Easter a happy Easter. Zombie Jesus Day. And for those of you that don't celebrate, well, happy Sunday. Today's video was going to be a very interesting one. So I had this whole 911 call ready for a woman who had gone missing under very mysterious circumstances with a very interesting 911 call. But as of yesterday or the day before, they just found her body. So the script is going to have to be rewritten. Plus, the family also asked for a bit of privacy, so I'm going to respect that and at least wait a week before I put this story out. So in the meantime, I did put together another crazy 911 compilation. And as always, viewer discretion is advised. But before we get into the video, today's video is sponsored by Fiona's Farm, a free-to-play game that's available in the App Store and on Google Play. Fiona's Farm stands out from other games because it's not only a puzzle game, but it's got a bunch of mysteries within there. So get your noggin working. Plus, there's no ads, so you get to enjoy the game without any interruptions. Fiona recently separated from her fiancé, returned to her hometown, and discovers a hidden lab. Then she unravels family secrets as she delves into the mysterious disappearance of her parents. She starts to discover that this is much more than just a simple family tragedy. You solve the puzzles to gain more resources that'll help you out for decorating your farm, embarking on a new adventure, and unlocking future storyline. Lately, when I've been getting off work, I load up Fiona's farm and sit on the back porch and enjoy the day and get my brain working. The puzzles are great too because there's many different aspects. Plus, it also shows you what bonus you'll get when you tap the symbols. You can pair two or above symbols together and you just tap on them. But you go ahead and look at the symbol that it shows because that'll show you whether you get a bomb or the little floaty thing or the rockets. You can play it solo or join a team for greater achievements and team competitions. And one of the best parts, you can play with no Wi-Fi. So that way if you're in a dead spot, you just pull it right up and you have something to do. Get that brain working. I highly recommend you download Fiona's Farm now to start enjoying this unique game. You can click the link in the description, the pinned comment, or scan my QR code to get playing today. Try to keep that brain active so you don't end up like a dummy. Once again, make sure to click the link in the description or the pinned comment, or scan my QR code to download today and get that brain active and figure out what the heck's going on. I want to give a big shout out to Fiona's Farm for sponsoring this video. Much love. Mike Perry and Danielle Nickerson got married in 2019 after having been together for five years. Mike, a UFC fighter, was abusive during this period. But in 2020, he took things too far, which would lead to the end of his marriage. In February of 2020, Mike got into an argument with a woman at a bar. Things turned ugly when he assaulted the woman after she poured a drink on him. The bouncer kicked them all out after that. Mike drove home in a rage. When he got home, he was still quite drunk. He took all of his anger out on Danielle. She says she was repeatedly punched and kneed until he got tired, leaving her injured and bruised. They had even heard a crack when Mike punched her ribs right before he stopped. When she had the opportunity, Danielle went to a neighbor's house to call Mike's mother. Mike's mother, Sabra Young, came to pick Danielle up and take her away from Mike. Mike ended up showing up to his mother's house making threats. Sabra locked him outside the house so he couldn't get to Danielle and then she dialed 911. I'm on one, you need police, fire, or medical? Police. For what address? Okay, and what are you needing an officer for? Hello? Um, going out, going out in the driveway and he's, um, violent right now and I'm scared for my life and I don't know what he's going to do. He's revving his engine right now. His wife is inside my house and I'm afraid he's going to hunger. Okay. How old is he? He is 25? No, 27. I'm sorry. And what he's kind of vehicle is he in? He has a Mercedes. Does he live there with you? No, absolutely not. He came to pick up his wife, which I went and picked her. Oh my God, what's he doing? <gasps> Oh what color is the Mercedes? It's, it's charcoal gray, black. Okay. And what is he driving on? He's running on my front yard. No, I don't know what he's doing. Did you hear that? Oh, you there he goes. Do you have any weapons oh, that you're aware of? No, he does not. He just took off. 
Okay. Did they have some kind of fight earlier? Yes. He has a temper. Okay. Which way did he go? Um, he's going out of the neighborhood. After that, I don't know. He, he'll either go left or right. But Where does he live? Um, uh, I don't trust him. He might come back, Daniel. Where yeah, does they're he coming. live? No, no. Um, he lives in, um, what's the town? Orlando. Okay. Do you think he might yes, be headed back come. there? I don't know. I think he. I think he's. Yeah. I think he's going to come back here. Is he, he alone? Said in he's the not going to leave. Yes, he said he's not leaving without her. And I said she's not getting in the car. I went and picked her up from the neighbors, but from the neighbors in Orlando. Scared. Yes, and okay. I brought her back to my house, and then he just showed up, and I tried to talk to him. And I told him he needed to leave and that he needed to go home and sleep. And he said, I'm not leaving. If she doesn't come out here in five minutes, I'm going to go home and burn the house down. And so I don't know. What is his name? I just... Michael Perry. Does he have a middle name? Joseph. And is he What's white, black, or Hispanic? Daniel? He's white. Can I give you their address, too? Sure. And what's his date of birth? Um, what is it? Yeah, nine fifteen ninety ninety one. Isn't that funny? I can't remember that guy. Okay, go ahead with what's the address, address in Orlando. Orlando. What? Yes. Okay. Three seven three nine one. And what is your name? My name is. How do you spell your first name? And what's your phone number? She's very terrified. Do you know what he was wearing tonight? Um, when I saw him just now, he had um, shorts on and a T-shirt. you know what color his shirt was? Okay. Um, no. He's a UFC fighter. You could Google his face. <sighs> Do you know if the Mercedes was an SUV, sedan? What kind of Mercedes was it? It's a, it's a very fast sports car. Is it a sedan? Is that what you call them? The sedan. Is it two door, four door? Two four door. Okay. Is there tinted windows? Tinted windows, yes. In the back. And does it have custom rims or just the factory rims on it? It's very custom. Very custom. It's very fast. Okay. We do have officers on the way. They should be there shortly. He hasn't returned while we've been talking, right? You haven't seen him? No, I haven't, but they can tell me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. No problem. They should be with you shortly. Some weeks later, Danielle acquired a police escort to help her get her things from the house. And the following day, she hired a lawyer and filed for divorce. Danielle maintains that she didn't ever take drastic measures against Mike because she didn't want to affect his UFC career. In December 2020, a 39-year-old man was attacked by a shark that bit him in the arm. It was quite surprising that he'd been attacked so close to the shore, and that the attack itself was not provoked. The man went back home bleeding the entire way and had an unidentified woman call 911 for help. 911, what's the location of the emergency? It's an emergency. He was bit by a shark, okay. but he made it home. He was swimming in the ocean. Okay, and uh, just confirm the city this is in? Siesta Key. And what Someone needs to come right away. He's bleeding today. Yes, I need to get you to give me some information. What is I need what? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What is the closest cross street or intersection? Um, Stickney Point Road. And what is the, uh, is there a name for the neighborhood or subdivision then? What is the uh, phone number you're calling from? It's a landline. Okay, are you with the patient now? No, he's upstairs. His friend just came okay, up. There's blood all over my him. house. He just ran in and... and so you are in the house with him, is that correct? 
Yes. Okay, and how old is he? 39. And is he awake? Yes, but he's bleeding to death. Is, is he breathing? This doesn't seem Yeah, he's breathing. Down. Just stay on the line. I will, but have you, sent, have you dispatched yes, someone? Yes, ma'am, this does not slow them down, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Stay I just needed to know that. Just one moment. They're on their way. They're on their way. Okay. Everything's going to be fine. Baby, where are you? Okay. And uh, is he completely alert? He's alert, but he needs help. And what part of his body was bitten? His hand. You just use, we need, should we put ice on it? What should we do? Okay, no ice, ma'am. Just what No kind ice, of, he's saying. What kind of injuries does he have? He has a shark bite on his yes, hand. I know that, ma'am, but is it... Uh, and his arm. What kind of injury? It's a yeah. cut. It's a bite. Would you a bite on his thumb muscle. Okay. As I said, I have to dispatch the paramedics to help you now. Stay on the line, and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Why are you saying no ice, sir? Because that's not what's recommended by the medical uh, people. Okay, they're not recommending ice. And I'm going to tell you how to stop. Is it just pressure? I'm going to tell you how to stop the bleeding. Listen carefully to make sure we do it right. I want you okay, to I'm going to put you on speakerphone. Hold on. Okay, this is how you stop the bleeding. I want you to get a clean, dry cloth or towel and tell me when you have it. All right, I'm going for it now. You have it? Oh, that was serious. Do you have it? Where is he? Get it now. Alright, so we have the towel. Okay. Uh, now place it right on the wood. Press down firmly and don't lift it up to look. No, no, no. Okay, without lifting the cloth, please tell me if the bleeding is under control now. We put compression on it, after with the towel, the bleeding is under control. It is still having to very bloody. Should he sign my head? I'm not able to understand what you're saying. Could you repeat um, that more slowly? The blood flow is under control. We have a partial tourniquet under the biceps. Okay, do not remove the tourniquet. Let the paramedics handle it. Okay. I'm going to push this right here. Okay. And uh, reassure him that help is on the way. From now on, don't let him have anything to eat or drink. It might make him sick or cause further problems. And don't move him unless it's absolutely necessary. Just help him be still and wait for help to arrive. And I want you to watch him very closely. If he becomes less awake and vomits, quickly lay him on his side. And uh, okay. I'll stay on the long line with you as long as I can. I want you to watch him very closely and look for any changes. If he becomes less awake or starts getting worse, tell me immediately and tell me when the paramedics are right with him. Is the door unlocked? Yes, yes. we're at the front door right, right now. There. Okay. All right. Just tell me when they're right with him. Can you repeat the address to verify that we have it correct? All right. And... Uh, for responder safety, have the patient and everyone else in the residence put on a mask, please. Okay. And did you say he's upstairs in the house? Okay, we're waiting by the door. We're right by the front door. By the front door. Okay, very good. Patients' privacy regulations stopped the hospital from releasing more information about the man, including how grave his injuries were. His case was one of eight cases of shark attacks that were not provoked that have occurred in just over a century. Michael Elijah Walker dealt with mental health issues for a long time. At just 19, he was already suffering from paranoia and delusions. There came a time when he would hear voices in his head and he became convinced that his parents were communicating with him telepathically and that they were satanic. 
Michael confronted his parents about their dabbling with Satanism, which led to an argument. Late one night in March 2019, Michael loaded a gun and shot at his father, hitting him wherever he could. His mother screamed for Michael's brother to call 911, and when she tried to escape, Michael gunned her down too. All the screaming and noise woke up Michael's younger brother, who at 2.30 a.m. went to call 911 as his mother had instructed him. He thought that there were burglars in the house, but after speaking on the phone with the dispatcher, he opened the bedroom door and saw his mother bleeding. That's when he saw his brother with the gun. 7-1, where's your emergency? Um, there's a bunch of gunfire in my house and I'm pleased with my brother. Okay, what's your address? Um, it's, um, uh, I forgot what it is, it's on, um, I forgot what it is, oh, crap. Is there a piece of mail uh, or something you can look at? Um, oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, hold on. What's on fire? Uh, oh, shit. What's your address? I don't recall, you know, just, what's your address? What's the address? Um, what's the address? Um, mom, don't call, I'm calling. All right, good. Uh, my apologies, give me a moment. What's on fire? Hello? 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 So are you there? What's the address? The address is, um... I can't even talk right now. What's on fire? Nothing's on fire. What um, what were you saying you need help for then? Um I, um What is going on there? Um, there's, um, uh, some fire. Okay, all I can hear you saying is what sounds like fire, and you said there's not a fire, so so say it again louder. No, gunfire. Gunfire. Okay, in the house or outside? In. In the house? Yes. Okay, what is your address? Um, I can't find it. Has anyone been it's shot? Like, uh, um, probably, but it's, uh... 2601 North Bryant Avenue. 2601 North Bryant. Okay, and do you think yeah. someone has been shot? Yes. Okay. Has anybody been drinking or doing any drugs there? I do not know. Okay, who is it that has the gun? Um, I do not know. Okay, do you see the person with the gun? Yeah. What do they look like? I need to know more information. I've got officers headed that way. Who do you see with a gun? I can't hear you. Hello? Where is the person with the gun? Yeah, this is Jessica with the Evan Police Department. Yes. Did I receive a call from you or from someone else there? Uh, me. Okay, I've got officers there. What's going on? Do you? Yeah, where's the person with the gun? Um, inside the house. He's inside the house? Yes. Okay, is the gun still out? No. And you're at 2601 North Bryant, correct? Uh, yes. And who is this person that has the gun?
Okay. Where is he at inside the house? Um, he's in his room. Okay, and does he live there? Uh, yes, ma'am. Is he white, black, Hispanic, Asian? Uh, he's, um, white. Are you able to step outside if I stay on the phone with you so officers can speak with you? Um, maybe. I don't know if I would be able to. Why would you not be able to? Um, well, he's my brother, and he shot my parents. He shot your parents? Where are they? Yep. Um, my first, my my father is uh, in his room on the floor, and my mom's by the front door on the floor. Okay, are they breathing? Uh, I do not believe they are. You said that you think that they're breathing? No, they're, I don't believe they are. How long ago were they shot? Uh, I believe about 10 minutes ago. Hold on one second. What? What? Okay, if I stay on the phone with you, are you able to step outside? I do what? If I stay on the phone with you, can you step outside? Um, maybe. Um, our house might be tricky to find because it's no, like there, has a. They're there. Sorry. It was there's a gate, correct? Um, kind of. How old kind are of, you? I am. Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Yes, ma'am. And how old's your brother? Uh, he is um, nineteen. You said he's nineteen. Yes. The authorities arrived and found that Michael was still inside with a gun. However, they talked him into leaving the house unarmed. Once outside, they arrested him and took him to the county jail, booking him for two counts of first-degree murder. Meanwhile, his parents passed away at the house from their gunshot wounds. The police also went on to discover homemade explosives. When the police interviewed Michael about what he did, he told them that he argued with his parents about Satanism and that he would kill his parents all over again because he felt he was doing the right thing. Leading up to the trial, Michael's competency came into question. Initially, it was held that he would be incompetent to stand trial. He then underwent an exam with a psychiatrist who found that Michael could in fact stand trial. Despite this development, Michael's attorney stated that he may not have been competent when he shot both of his parents. Michael's half-sister also stated that Michael is schizophrenic, and that he was also a victim because of that. The court proceedings are still ongoing. Robbie Wilt from Louisville, Kentucky, was driving his red Dodge Charger down the road in Valley Station, Kentucky when he saw a six-year-old girl playing outside. It was 5.40 in the evening, and the young girl was playing with her bicycle. Robbie parked his car and approached her. He then grabbed her by her collar and threw her into his passenger seat and drove off. A neighbor, Prentice Weatherford, saw the entire kidnapping unfold. Prentice and his father followed Robbie in their own car. Meanwhile, other witnesses who saw the kidnapping dialed 911. 911, operator Inch Maggio, what is the location of your emergency? Uh, Valley Station. What? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody just grabbed a little girl. Where? In Valley Station, uh, right off of uh, the Painting Lane. What's your address, sir? Who is it that took her? I don't know. I just happened to look out. She was probably drawing on the sidewalk with chalk. What kind of type of vehicle were they in? A red uh, Challenger. Two guys just come by. They, they must have seen it. They said they said they'd stop after them. I don't know. How old is she? Six. They were in what kind of type of vehicle? They were in a different car. He, was, he said it was a red Challenger. I seen it was red when he, I could see him grab her and just take off. Which they way did they go? They went down Haney towards uh, Grafton Hall Road. It's got black trim on it. It's a real Challenger. 
Do you have any part of the license plate number? No, no, no. That, I was what do the guys look like? He had, he was a white guy, dark hair, fairly young. I, I, that's a, I just look out and see him jumping in the car. What does she look like? Black, white, Hispanic? She's white. Uh, she's got kind of real hair, blue eyes. What was she last seen wearing? Uh, she was wearing, I mean, just shorts and a little top, light colored. I don't know. You don't know what color? Shoes on. No, they were real white. I don't know. Okay, does she have any uh, physical, mental, psychological disabilities? No, no, she's fine. Okay. And you have no idea who these people were? No, I just called them. All right, so they, they, they were in a red Challenger? Yes. And they were lasting headed on Haney Way toward Grafton Hall? Yes. Okay. What's your name, sir? And his. We got police on the way, sir. All right. What kind of work was Real challenges. The authorities quickly tracked down Robbie's car to a driveway. An officer approached the car with a gun drawn and yelled at Robbie to open the passenger door. The six year old was thankfully recovered, terrified and crying. The police then asked him to get out of his vehicle, kneel on the ground, and put his hands up. Robbie told the officer that he feared he was going to harm the girl, so he was going to take her back. The authorities charged Robbie with one count of kidnapping a minor. Malcolm Douglas Cobb Jr. and Spencer Smith were neighbors. Malcolm has a horrifying criminal history. In 2009, the authorities charged him with sexual assault. He had also threatened his victim, who he had been arguing with, at knife point. On January 29, 2014, Malcolm, his cousins Joshua and Jonathan, and Spencer were doing drugs and drinking together at Spencer's house. While they were hanging out, Malcolm accused Spencer of being a rapist. He went so far as to threaten Spencer with a knife, but Spencer continued to deny the allegations although he was terrified and had even started crying. Joshua then threatened him to keep his mouth shut. Meanwhile, Smith got up and went out of his bedroom. Unfortunately for him, Malcolm followed him there. He then got out a gun and asked Smith to open his safe. Malcolm then shot Spencer Smith several times before taking the safe to another apartment. Joshua accompanied him, and together they concocted a story of what had transpired. Eventually, Malcolm returned to the scene of the crime and called the police. 911, where's your emergency? Yes, I have a situation here. I was attacked by somebody, and uh, they ended up trying to stab me, and then he went in and grabbed a gun and came out to shoot me. Where are you at? And uh, where I ended up, um, I'm off of 53rd Street. What's the address out here you guys know? 64, uh, 64, 13, West 300 South, and the gentleman that tried to stab me ended up grabbing a gun and coming and fighting with me, and we got into a dispute, and he got shot, and I don't believe he's alive. Okay. 64, 13, West 300 South? Yes, sir. Okay. And so he's, is he, is he conscious? Uh, sir, he's blue and white. He's dead. How long ago did this happen? Um, it probably about 20, 30 minutes ago. I've been so freaked out, I didn't know what to do. I was going to go into Anderson and turn myself in, and then instead of leaving, I was told to call. Okay, you're at 6413 West 300 South? Yes, sir. Okay, stay on okay? Yes, sir. I'll go in and look to make sure that he's not breathing, but I doubt if he is. Where is, it, where is the gun now? Uh, the gun is laying out on the porch with a bag of bullets and the knife that he tried to cut me with. I laid them outside on the porch. He's laying in here in the bedroom against his bed, and there's blood everywhere. I'm going to turn the light on. Um, there's blood everywhere, and he is dead white. He's, he's not alive, sir. 
like I said, he tried to try to shoot me and, and my cousin was with me and, and I was scared he was going to try, try to shoot my cousin and try to stab me and cut me. And then after he done that, he said he would go in and do the rest and come out with a gun. Okay, stay on the line with me, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, I'm, I don't know, I've never had nothing like this happen. Like I said, he was going to either kill me or he was going to kill my cousin. And I couldn't let that happen. In Malcolm's court trial, he said he felt his life was in danger, so he had to defend himself against Spencer. According to him, it was Spencer that was making threats with a knife. He added that he followed Spencer to his bedroom because he knew Spencer was going to get a gun. Malcolm said that he wrestled the gun from Spencer and in the process, the handgun went off. Malcolm also claimed that Spencer had threatened his life on previous occasions. It was very clear that Malcolm was lying. The story he was claiming to be true also went against Jonathan and Joshua's testimonies. Hence, the jury found Malcolm guilty of murder. Brandon Lee had a troubled upbringing and addiction problems. There was a time when his life was quite good. He had a job on Wall Street and was modeling as well. But his addiction issues came in the way of all of that. As a result, he became emotionally detached and temperamental. What's worse is his relationship with his mother was deteriorating. He started to get in trouble with the law and was arrested for trespassing and disorderly conduct. And on December 14th, 2015, after his mother made threats towards him with a knife, he snapped and strangled her to death. He then moved her body to the bathtub, filled it with ice, and went on living his life as if nothing had happened. He still returned to his mother's house now and then to feed her dog. He would even take the dog on walks. Apart from that, he went to the movies and even got a new tattoo. And then things took a turn for the worst when Brandon found out his girlfriend was seeing one of his co-workers. He went over to her house, and about a week after he killed his mother, he tragically strangled his girlfriend to death too. After that, he dialed 911. Carrie, police, Donna. Hi, Donna, I'm going to report a couple of incidences. Okay, what type of incidents? Uh, pretty bad. Pretty bad, what type of incidents? Homicide. You need to report a homicide? Yes. Okay, where did it happen? Um, this one was at, there was two of them. There were two of them? Mm-hmm. Okay, where was the first one? First one was at North Carolina. Yep. And when did that happen? Um, like earlier this week. And who was killed? My mother, she attacked me with a knife. And then I, uh, I killed her. And where are you at now? Now I'm at my girlfriend's, and she tried to leave me, and so I ended up killing her too. Okay, and what is her address? Her address is... How do you spell the street name? I'm unarmed. I'm just destroyed about how everything went down and willing to turn myself in. You need a chair, whatever you need to do. I'm just, it's just a terrible tragedy that just happened. Okay, and what is your name? My name is. All right, and you're at the. Yeah, I mean, uh, wherever you want me to come, I'll be outside. All right, you want. well, hang. I want you to stay on the phone with me till the officers get there, but hang on just a second, okay? Okay. When did you kill your mother? Uh, mother was killed. I think it was like Sunday or Monday night. Okay, and is she still inside the house? Yeah, she's in her bathroom. Um, yeah, she's in her bathroom in the tub. How did you do it? Um, she came at me with a knife and then I ended up choking her. Alright, and what about your girlfriend? Uh, my girlfriend was seeing someone else and lying to me and I ended up choking her too. Okay, and where is she at in the house there? She's right here on the floor. 
In what room? In the main living room. And when did you do that? Uh, that was um, yesterday afternoon. Okay. And I've just been drinking and just trying to get up the nerves to turn myself in. Okay. Well, you did the right thing. I want you to stay on the phone with me until they get there. Give me just a second and let me get this in the computer, okay? All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What's the phone number you're calling from? Uh, I'm calling from her number, which is... All right, hold on just a second. And then also, um, my uh -huh. dog is in my bedroom at the two address. I texted my, um, my stepfather to come down and get him. I don't know if you guys put him in the shelter or whatever, but he's going to try to come get the dog. So the dog's been by, the dog's been by himself he's, since he's, Monday? Yeah, yeah he's, he's by, well, no, he's by himself right now. So when was the last time you were at uh, I was there earlier today to feed him until I could get up the nerve to call him and report myself. All right. Okay. Hang on just one second for me, okay? All right, thank you. Uh-huh. Still with me? Yes, ma'am. All right. We'll have some officers coming out there to, um, but I do want you to stay on the phone with me until they get there, okay? Okay. And you said you did... The door's unlocked, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm just here waiting to pay the price and whatever happens. I'm just, uh... All right, well, you did the right thing by calling and turning yourself in. That's a good thing. Are there any weapons in the house that you've got access to? Uh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. I mean, there's like a, like a nice set in the kitchen, but I'm, not no, I'm nowhere near that. I mean, I'm just here on the couch. Okay. Waiting. And this happened yesterday, right? Yes, ma'am. Have you got any pets there in the house on? Uh, no, no. Okay. All right. Have you been drinking today? Uh, I had a, like, a couple of but I'm not intoxicated. I'm just okay. tired. You had, uh, what, what is it that you had? Like a, a like one of those beers. Is that, a, is that a beer? Yeah. Okay. I'm not really familiar with beer, so. All right. And there's so many different kinds now. This whole juice, forgive me. My, my girlfriend is addicted to drugs and running around, and my mother wanted to kill herself. I couldn't let her kill herself because that's how forgivable sin. And she's trying to kill me at the same time, so I don't know. I hope this all works out with the Lord. Well, you know, it all it all depends on what you believe, and if if that's what you believe, and and you're really sorry, and you repent, and you turn your life around, then they say He'll forgive you. Yes, ma'am. I don't know that for sure, because I've never been up there, but so I have to. I have to believe that there's nothing that's unforgivable as far as the Lord's concerned. Mm -hmm. Is there only one bathroom um, in the house over there? On this on just two. Okay. So and the one on the right hand side has my dog in. Okay. Is that like a hall? Is that like a hall bathroom or also? Um, no, it's like a separate um, bathroom bedroom. Okay. And then the one on the left hand side has the one with my mom in it.
When did you call your stepfather? I just texted him just now. Okay, has he texted you back? I don't think so. Let me see. No. Okay. Where does he live at? He lives in New Jersey. Okay. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't any way he would get there before the officers did. No. Okay. You want to take his number? Yeah, go ahead and let me get that. What's his name? His name is... And his phone number is... Yes, ma'am. And that was... Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is there anybody else there in the house with you? Uh, no. And when you said the door's open there, do you mean it's open, open, or is it just unlocked? It's unlocked. That's okay. open. It's no, don't do that. I want you to stay right there until the officers tell me they want you to come to the door, okay? Okay. What's your girlfriend's name? Her name is... Okay. Yes. Can you... How close is the pool to where you are? It's right, right down the hallway. Okay, the officers want you to meet them at the pool. There is an officer there. So what I want for you to do for me is take your cell phone with you. Mm -hmm. I want you to go to the pool, and I don't want you to have your hands in your pockets or anything, okay? Okay. Have the one on your phone up to your ear, and then have the other hand out where they can see it. Okay. Yes, ma'am? What are you wearing? I'm wearing a, like a beige sweater and blue jeans. A beige sweater and blue jeans? Yeah. All right. Are you on your way to the pool, dear? Yeah. Okay. Make sure you did what I told you about keeping that other hand out where they can see it, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, is the door to your mom's over on... Is it unlocked? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Are you out there with the officers? During Brandon's trial, his defense made the case that he had not premeditated the murders. When Brandon took the stand, he told the jury that his mother was provocative and uncaring towards him, despite knowing he was an alcoholic. He even claimed that she gave him $20 to buy alcohol and pills so that he could take his own life. Brandon then said he did not turn himself into the police sooner because he was looking for a new home for his mother's dog. In the end, the jury found Brandon guilty of first-degree murder, and the judge sentenced him to two consecutive life sentences. Jeremiah Manel and Tara O'Shea were married and had two children together, a son aged 12 and a daughter aged 5. The family lived together in a trailer. Their marriage had been falling apart for a long time, mainly because Jeremiah was violent. After years of physical violence at the hands of her husband, Tara started to fight back. She wanted a divorce and also acquired a court-issued restraining order against Jeremiah. Tara was even planning on moving away from New Jersey and staying as far away from Jeremiah as possible. Sadly, a judge put a stop to her taking Jeremiah's children out of the state, and in November 2016, domestic violence charges against Jeremiah were dismissed. The domestic violence charges were related to an incident that occurred in April when Jeremiah broke into Tara's home to assault her, so the charges being dropped were a big blow. On December 18th, Jeremiah went over to Tara's to do some brake line work on a truck. A fight broke out after Jeremiah asked Tara to take him back, and Jeremiah wound up stabbing Tara after she refused him. What's more is that he was stabbing her in front of his son who was hiding behind the curtain, but he could see the murder unfolding before him. Next thing, his son was in a neighbor's house. The neighbor went over and saw Tara on the floor, a blanket covering her body. Her exposed face was bloody and there was a deep stab wound on her neck. Meanwhile, another neighbor dialed 911. Yes, I need a state, a state trooper over here at uh, 7901 Henry Street. 
Okay, is it Henry Street you said? Is that in Commercial Township? Uh, yes. Okay, what's going on there? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, my, my wife's best friend's door, uh, son just came down to my house, yeah. talking about his mom's dead. Yeah, okay. Just woke me and my wife up to have a sound sleep. My wife is, my wife is inside right now, checking on her to see if she's okay. Okay, 7901 Henry Street, and you said what's going on exactly? Uh, my wife's best friend's son, Ted, uh, best friend, her son just came down to my house saying his mother is dead. Is dead? Yes. Okay, and is she, are you there? Can you see if she's breathing? Uh, my wife is inside right now. I'm walking through. I'm not touching anything just in case. All right. Do you know how old she is? How old is she? She is dead. Okay, but do you know how old she was? Uh, how old is she, hun? I know she's in her thirties. And what's your name, sir? Yes. Okay. And Thirty-five is her age. Thirty-five, and they just found yes. her. Yeah, my wife just found her on the living room floor. Okay. All right. Hold her ex-husband, her ex-husband was over here last night doing brake line work on her truck. Okay. And injuries to her that you can see, or is she just? Oh, uh, hi. Is there any injuries? Can you see? My, my, my wife doesn't want to touch her. Okay, she's but, covered up in a blanket. Okay, so it looks like she may have passed in her sleep? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but there's no, like, any injuries to her, no blood anywhere, right? Uh, I don't see any blood. Okay. And, okay. And her, ex, and, her, and her ex-husband was here last night, and I got a paramedic here. Uh, off Oh my God, she was murdered. It was a she, murder? What kind of injuries? I'm on the phone with the state police right now. Okay, what kind of injuries does she have, sir? Uh, All right, sir, hold on one I second. I need state trooper out here now. All right, calm down. I'm making it to the state police right now. Okay? Hey, hey, hold on one second. State Police, Cumberland County, with a he's at 7901 Henry Street. Uh, he says that he just found a 35-year-old female in bed. Uh, it appears that she was murdered in her sleep. Uh, Sir, that's 7901 Henry Street, right? Yes, ma'am. And what's your I'm first more, name? I'm, I'm, who is this female? This is a friend of my friend. Uh, uh, and she was staying there overnight? This was her home. Her home? Okay. Her home, yes. Jeremiah ran away after murdering Tara. The authorities were looking for him for two weeks before he was finally caught and charged. Although it is unfortunate that the son witnessed the tragic scenes on that night, his testimony would be instrumental in putting Jeremiah behind bars for life. He revealed that Tara had even pleaded with Jeremiah to let her pass away in peace while he was strangling her. After brutally ending Tara's life, the son says Jeremiah then sat down to have a smoke. I said, you killed her, and I said that a few times, the son recalled during a court hearing. After being sentenced to life in prison, family members had a chance to have their say in the matter. Many were glad Jeremiah would finally have to answer for all of the terrible and abusive crimes he committed against Tara. It was an emotional experience. Some family members even chose not to read out their statements. Christy and Jason Sheets were in a loving relationship for a while. They met in Alabama when they were young and later in life they raised their two daughters in Houston. Their oldest daughter Taylor was 22 and Madison was 17. Taylor was a great artist and after graduating from Lone Star College in Texas, she went on to work as a full-time teacher at a child daycare center. Madison, like her older sister, liked to work with children and became a babysitter for three years. In the beginning, Christy was a good mother who loved her children. However, over time, Jason and Christy's marriage began to fall apart. Christy was dealing with many personal problems, including the death of her grandfather in 2012 and the death of her mother just two months later. She had tried to end her own life three times. She was suffering from depression. There came a point when Christy would argue with Taylor, who wanted to marry her boyfriend, Juan, Christy wanted to ground Taylor to keep her away from her boyfriend, but John didn't think it was right to ground a 22-year-old. This was at the time when Christy's depression had taken its toll, and she had started drinking heavily. 
She had also been unemployed for a while. The next day when Christy called for a family meeting, Jason thought she was going to reveal to them that their marriage was falling apart, but Christy wound up shooting their daughters. Madison died while Taylor escaped onto the street before Christy shot her again. Taylor later died at the hospital. Jason, meanwhile, had escaped Christy and was seeking help from a neighbor when the 911 call was made. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, yes, uh, we need an ambulance uh, right away. That's people, two people believe, uh, believe they're shot. Okay, stay on the line. <laughs> okay, you think they got shot, you say? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, stand on there's, 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 there's a lady with a gun. There's a lady there's with a, lady. a gun? Where? Yes. It's coming out of the house right now. Okay. Two people shot outside. Okay. Two people shot outside. Okay. Where is the lady with the gun? It's coming out of it's on the street right now. Is she still shooting? Uh, no, it's not shooting, but it's a, the gun is in her hand. I ran to the back of my house. Okay. Who? Do you know who the lady is? Uh, they're my neighbors. I don't Okay, and the people that she shot are are. Do you know them? Are like no, are ma'am. Her? Okay. Are you with the Are you with the patients right now? No, because the lady. Okay. With the gun what came out. Wearing? I had to run. Describe her for me. What is she wearing? What is she wearing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. What I had she... to run to the back. Okay, I understand. Uh, what is she? Lim... Can you describe Lim... her for me? What is she? White, black, Hispanic, or Asian? She's uh no, she's a uh. Caucasian. Okay. Go back there. Uh, okay. What is she wearing? She's wearing a dress. What color dress? Yeah, uh, let me let me try to pick the window. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. No problem. Don't put yourself in danger though. But do you remember what co what color her dress was? She's wearing a uh, uh purple dress. Purple dress. Yes. Okay. She's wearing a purple dress. She, she's on the. Is it long, short? What is she? She. Where are the patients? They're, the, they're in the street. They're in the middle of the street. They're, they're, okay. I was long though. It's two people laying in the street? Two people, two ladies laying in the street. Two females? Okay. Yeah, two females. And there's a guy trying to help them. But the okay. lady is on, top, on the top of one of them with a gun on her hand. Okay, but the the sub the the suspect is on top of one of the females on the street. Yeah, she's she's just on the street, just standing up. She's standing over at one of the patients with the gun. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, they look like both of them are alive. Both of the child person, the okay. two ladies, they they're both alive, but. Okay. And, you know, she tried to shot again. She's trying to shoot again on the top of her, but okay. apparently she don't have no more. Apparently she don't have any more bullets. Okay, yeah, I, I do too, sir. Just stay on the line. And let me know what you see. But okay. don't. I don't she's going. She's going inside. She's going inside the house now. Uh, hopefully, it's not getting any more bullets because she looks like she's going to look for more bullets. Okay. All right, stay on the line. And there's a. I don't know where the guy went, but apparently she's he's ye yelling at her. And okay. they're talking back Who and forth. The, the, describe the guy. The guy is, a, is a also, they're all uh, Caucasians. Okay. Okay. And so the okay. the two females and the male is Caucasian. Yes, all, all, all four of them. Okay. And is the she, male she's is coming out, also? She's, she's, she's coming back again. She's coming back again. With a, apparently she has bullets now on her on her. Okay, stay stay on the line. Oh, she shot her again. She shot her she again. She shot her again. Yes, from the back. She was trying to run. She shot. She shot another the female again. That was. Yes, that was laying down on the floor. She okay. shot her from the back. Okay, stay on the line. She shoot. You shoot her again. They're running her, uh, down the street. Are they on the side? No, baja, Adrian. Porque es más arriba, más fácil que se vaya una bullet. ¿Por qué te fuiste para allá? Vente okay. para acá. Sir, what do you yes, see? What is she doing now? Ella se quiere, lay down on the floor. Okay, sir. Lay down on the floor, Adrian. Yeah, make sure your family is, is secure. Don't 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 let yes. anyone see you looking out the window, okay? Can, can anyone see you? Yes. <laughs>
at her address. No, that's, that's her address. Okay. I can hear her. I don't see them anymore. But okay. there's the uh, bullets. I can I can hear bullets. And she's she's laying down on the floor now. The female that was shooting is laying down? Yes. Did she shoot herself? I don't know. I don't know. I I just see her down on the floor now, but I don't I don't know what happened because I had to want to uh, take okay. my son to safety. Okay. Con qué estás hablando ya? Okay. Did she shoot herself? Apparently she did. You think she shot herself? Apparently she shot herself. Yes. Okay. Then is she I don't, I don't see. I don't. She's moving. Yes. Okay. You know. Uh, it doesn't look like she's moving anymore. Okay. Okay, sir, okay. Okay. I'm so sorry you're saying this, okay. but just stay on the line. Okay, okay. Well, Adrian, está bien, ya, ya, ya se disparó sola. Okay. Stay on the line, sir. Yes. Okay, what do you see now? Are the two are, are the two females still laying in the street? Uh, I can't see them. Uh, I have to say, take my son to safety. Hold on a second, please. Okay, no problem. If you're if you if you have to take your family to safety, then don't worry about going back to the window. Okay, okay. 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 Okay, Okay, so do you happen to know the names of these people? Do you know your neighbors? Uh, no, I don't know their their names or anything. Okay. Okay, preciosa. I'm sorry, preciosa. Pero no te vayas para arriba nunca, okay? Cuando vaya así, algo así. I'm sorry. I had to call my son because I, he's, I he's trying to. I I'm, I'm so sorry you had to see that, sir. I'm, I'm so sorry you had to see that. Christy tried to kill Jason after reloading, but a detective and a police officer arrived at the scene and ordered her to drop her gun. When she ignored the order, the police officer killed her with one shot. The police later revealed that they believed Christy intended to keep Jason alive. She had told Jason that she wanted to make him suffer, and she also had more than enough time to shoot Jason and kill him, but didn't. The authorities hospitalized Jason due to his emotional state after losing his entire family. On the night of April 21st, 2016, in the morning of April 22nd, eight members of the Roden family from Pike County, Ohio were shot dead with seven of them being killed execution style. That Friday, April 22nd, Bobby Joe Manley, a sister of Dana Roden, one of the family members that had been killed, went to feed the family's dogs and chickens. It was around 7 a.m. The front door was locked and the dogs were nowhere to be seen. She ended up walking right into a crime scene and immediately dialed 911. <laughs> Box. I think my brother was dead. Okay, what, what's your address? Give me just a second. Please, please, you gotta tell me what's going on. There's blood all over the house. Okay. My brother was in the bedroom. It looks like I beat the hell out of him. Okay. There's blood all over the front room. Can you tell me what county that's in? Is it my it, county? It's my county? Yes, and they drug him in the bathroom. Okay, okay, I need you to get out of the house. Did you drive over there? Yes, I did. Okay, what's your name? My What's your brother-in-law's name? Huh? What's your brother-in-law's name? Uh -huh. yeah. Ma'am? Yeah. What's his name? Chris Roden, King Gary Roden. Chris and Gary Roden? Chris, I'm in there, looks like they're dead. You think they're both dead? I think they're both dead, looks like someone has beat the fuck out of them. Okay. Is there anybody else in the house? Not that I know of. Okay. The door was locked when we got here, but I know where the key was at. And I went in, and there are laying on the floor. Okay. 
And you can get out of the house and wait. I'm done now. Okay. And I'll start right now. Okay. Just stay out of the house. Don't let anybody go in there, okay? Yeah. All right. We got that video on the way, okay? Uh, thank you. You're welcome. News of what happened began to spread prompting Donald Stone, a cousin of Kenneth Roden, to check in on him and see if he was okay. And just like Bobby, Donald ended up walking into a crime scene and immediately dialing 911. 911, there's Pike County, sir, go ahead. Yeah. This is 911, can I help you? Yeah, I need a, a deputy to come out to close to 799 West Fork. Okay. Uh, it's all this stuff that's on the news. Uh, my, I just found I just found my cousin with a gunshot wound. Okay. So is he still alive? No, no. Okay. And you're at 799 West Fork? It's close to 799. I don't know what his address is. You don't, you don't have a box. You don't have a box. Okay. I'll be standing out by the very way going. What's your name, sir? Donald Stone. Donald Stone? Donald Stone. Stone? I, yeah, I'm his cousin. What's his name? Kenneth Roden. Kenneth Roden? Yeah. Okay, sir, are you out of the house? I'm out, I'm out of the house right now. I just went in, uh, and checked the right and I looked up and he had a gunshot wound. Okay, sir, we're going to get deputies out there to you, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. The authorities released another 911 call made by Kenny Rodens. Kenny had made the call after the massacres in which his little brother and cousins were killed. 911. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is uh, Kenny Roden, and there is somebody following me right now, chasing me. For someone chasing uh, you? I, I, I do have, I, I fear for my life. I, I'm leaving the speedway and headed towards Drift, and somebody's chasing me. Are you leaving the speedway in South Shore? South Shore and here's the Greenup. On 23. On 23. He's fucking flipping us off. I've got McHale. I'm right here by McHale. Right now. Yeah, Pat's going through McHale's red light. You're by McHale? Three miles. Huh? You're passing McHale now? Yes, ma'am. There's going to be Kenny Roden. He said he's fearing for his life. Chase you for about 8 to 10 went, miles. He, yeah, he's, uh, he's in front of us now. I don't know what he's doing, if he'd give up or whatever, but I'll give you the license place number, whatever. He's trying to block us off. He's trying to block you off? Another vehicle to me at the ground. At Speedway, and he tried to block us off on Tiger Bend, and we got back to the church and got away from him. <laughs> and on 784. 8 to 10 miles. What kind of vehicle are you driving? He's about two cars ahead of us now. We're getting ready to uh, just turn around. He's going on toward Greenham. He's, okay, y'all's turning around and he's going on towards Greenham? Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, if, if he don't uh, stop at his next turnaround spot up here, we're going to turn around. Oh, uh, we're, we're at... Uh, we're going by Sitgo, I should say. Uh, yeah, I don't want to round him. I don't know who he is. Okay. Are you? You said you're going back towards Speedway now. Nah, I'm at Sitgo right now. Oh, uh, you're I'm at Sitgo. And, and I'm turning around, and headed back towards Speedway. He's going on up the road now. Okay. He probably seen me on the phone or whatever. I don't know. Plate number. We did get his license plate number. I don't know what his problem was. Not I don't know, but I know there's a, been a big hit that my little brother and a couple of my cousins just got shot a couple of days ago. Okay. It's all over the news. Where was that at, sir? That was in Pike County, Ohio. Eight people killed. And it, it, it basically told all the roads to be aware or whatever. Okay. But he's not around you now? He's went the other... No, he's got... He, he is... He, he is... Uh, head toward Green. And what kind of tag... What was the tag again? Okay, do you want to speak to an officer, sir? 
Uh, oh, I, I don't know what to do. I, I've never had anybody do me that way before is what I'm telling you. My name is Kenny Roden. Uh, there was more than one guy, more than one person in the vehicle. There were several, several different males in the vehicle? There was at least two that I know for a fact. I couldn't tell what the other one was. Okay. But the last time I seen them, they were passing Dig and Go and headed towards Greenham. And we're headed, uh, we was going you know, to Walmart where we were going. Five to 20. You want me to have him wait at Speedway and talk to an officer or not? Okay, sir. The officer are on route now. Do you want to speak to one of them? Uh, come back to Lake Green. I mean, uh, I mean, the danger's over, but I mean, I, I would like the vehicle to be investigated. Who was the hell was in it? Yeah. I mean, they're chasing me, trying to cut me off, trying to make me stop. Okay. And, and every way that they can. I mean, I, I, that's all I'm asking. Uh, okay. Okay, sir. We gave it to our officers, and he's on his way looking for him now. All right. Thank you. Bye. The police investigated the murders for two and a half years before they arrested the Wagners and charged them with the murder of the eight members of the Rodden family. The Wagners were another local family who had a business relationship with the Roddens as well as a personal one since Edward, Jake Wagner, and Hannah Roden had a four-year-old daughter. The Attorney General Mike Dewan later stated that an obsession over the custody of that very daughter is what initiated the killings. The authorities even acquired evidence to prove the Wagner family had been covering up the murders they had committed. The investigation into the murders had brought up other findings as well. For example, investigators discovered marijuana operations at three of the crime scenes, which had led them to believe that the murders were drug-related. It was only in May 2017 when the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation would search a farm previously owned by the Wagner family and just a month later, the Attorney General managed to connect the Wagner family to the Rodden Massacre. Four members of the Wagner family were arrested, and from what I can see, it looks like they're still awaiting trial. 2018 is when they were caught, and they usually don't rush trials when it comes to murderers and stuff, because they're not going anywhere. Once again, I really want to thank you for watching this video. And if you want to help the channel out and get yourself a nice mystery going, make sure to click the link in the description to download Fiona's Farm, or scan my QR code on the screen. I hope everyone's staying safe out there, and I really want to thank all of you that made it to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. I will catch you in the next one. And just remember, it's always scarier if it's true. Bad bye.